Okay, traders, that's one o'clock UK time. Welcome to this afternoon's live analysis session with uh, me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me loud and clear and you can see the tick mill welcome screen, you can just type a Y in the chat box. So I know we're all good and we can get going. Okay, so before we jump into today's content, as always, I want to adhere to the risk disclaimer understanding that trading any financial instrument carries an inherent amount of risk. You can actually lose more capital than you necessarily have on deposits. Uh, more importantly for today's session, uh, any views represented by me today are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of uh, Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, before we jump into to today's charts and discussion, uh, I wanted to start off with a brief introduction to myself for those here for the first time. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling on the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what you could loosely call losing positions, uh, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit on my own capital. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching, sobering experience is, uh, is an understatement. I had to really stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. I worked with my mentor for 18 months to two years. It was a period during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a trading strategy that suited my personality, extensively back and forward testing, and then developing a rigorous risk management approach to underpin the strategy. But more importantly, during that period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift for me was moving from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains uh, to more importantly becoming a process-orientated individual. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on a, managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, often during times of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. Once you become process-orientated and have a professional trading mindset and understand the true nature of trading, insofar as it really is a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of each trade. I'm no longer concerned about uh, the outcome of individual trades or even strings of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, also delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, from 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices through to uh, former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, uh, contributing uh, written content, webinars, and live presentations on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. 
in addition to my fund management and private mentoring. I'm also resident market expert for Tickmill, uh, providing market and trade analysis. And as you can see on the screen here, I provide a daily market outlook, which gives you my, uh, my perspective on uh, the FX majors for the day ahead. I also provide a, a chart of the day more recently uh, via social media. I also provide a what we call a Ticknell chart it, which is an interactive uh, chart breakdown of a setup I'm looking at in the markets for the, day, for the session ahead. You can register via the Ticknell blog to receive my updates via email. Um, my other real, I guess, passion project is as the head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called FX Career Swap. Dot com. We offer development and funding to retail trading talent at FX Career Swap. We don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in successful students managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Uh, and for those that are interested, I can uh, I can post a link in the chat. Uh, later on. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, can I just ask that you, uh, you hold the questions uh, to the end of the, uh, to the chart session here, and then I'll open up a QA and a and you're, you're welcome then to, to chip in with questions via the chat, or you, I can unmute your mic and you can speak to me uh, via audio and uh, happy to, to look at any, uh, any charts or, or cover off any questions you, you may have. Um, so without further ado, let's start with the dollar index. And I guess a, a brief overview of where we're up to with respect to these, uh, what are seeming now to be never ending election results. So um, we are in a situation at the moment where it, we're in a contested election. And, um, and what you're looking at on the screen here is actually a, uh, a fractal um, which represents the price action in the dollar index post a contested election. So this line here is the election day. So we think about that in terms of, uh, of Tuesday. And then, oops, a daisy. And then what we've got is uh, this is an aggregate of the price action that we saw um, post any uh, context contested election. So. It's not necessarily is price going to match this to the tick and we're going to see um, price action play out exactly like this. But what we can anticipate is there's the potential for price to, uh, to mimic this um, pattern as such. So, well, I guess the, the, the core feedback or the core um, takeaway from this chart is that in a contested election, the, uh, the consensus view was that you'd see dollar strength. When in reality, um, since 1972, whenever there has been a contested election or a delayed result, uh, we've actually seen dollar weakness. Um, that's counterintuitive, I guess, to, to those who are of the mindset that, you know, the dollar is the ultimate safe haven. But if you think about it a little deeper, you know, until there's actually some clarity in terms of the US government, you can see why investors may want to shun the US markets and, uh, and reduce dollar exposure. So you can see here on average, we can look at 45 days past the election. So in terms of where we're at at the moment, this would take us in just before Christmas, before the dollar really stabilizes. And then we can see, uh, see a leg to the upside in terms of dollar. Now this, uh, this idea of the dollar strength post election is, uh, is further solidified here in this slide. This is a Bloomberg uh, going back to the 1980s. And what we, what we actually see, or what, uh, what tends to be the case, is that the dollar appreciates 100 days after a US election. So if we think now we've probably got, you know, we might have here 30 or 40 days of weakness. You can see 2004, um, we, got, we did see a bit of a pullback, but every other year, uh, we've tended to see this dollar strength 100 days after US elections. So if we go back to that original slide here, we can think to ourselves, right, there's the potential here to see a bit of a slide in the dollar uh, heading into uh, the back end of this year, but then we can actually see a period of, uh, of dollar strength heading out into um, January or back end, or let's say late December, early January. And now if we think about seasonal patterns in terms of the dollar index, um, the dollar index has a tendency to perform pretty well in, uh, in January and February of each uh, of this year, of, of, of um, 
of, of the year, so the calendar year. This is actually a, um, a matrix that shows you uh, seasonal patterns in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, the major trading instruments. And, uh, and we can see that dollar tends to do pretty well at the beginning of the year anyway, regardless of it being a post-presidential cycle. What we also want to bear in mind is that from a positioning perspective, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're at pretty uh, extreme levels in terms of positioning on the downside in terms of the dollar, and we're at pretty elevated levels at, uh, with respect to positioning on the upside for the euro. So if we're going to think about the charts now, let's, uh, let's jump in. Let's check in. This, these charts I've got set up to show the fractal patterns that we've been tracking. Um, this is one second. Let me go zoom out a couple of legs here. So what we were looking at essentially was going to be some strength in the dollar into uh, into the election, which we had. We didn't. It didn't quite reach the. It didn't perfectly match the the overlay here. But you can see we had the strength into the election, and now we're getting uh, getting the sell off. And I'm anticipating that this sell off now. Uh, is the, you know, we're going to see a leg down here in terms of the dollar. Do I think it's going to run to the extreme that we saw here? Not necessarily, and we'll look at the trading charts in a minute. Um, but I, I perceive that we see a bit of dollar weakness here. Um, this is the euro. And what I want to look at a little bit more carefully here, so we've got the euro bouncing um, as, we ran, as we anticipated post the election. Um, now what we want to think about is, well, what happened uh, in 2016 when we last saw, uh, when we last had elections, and if we look at where we were, we are kind. Of, let me just remove all drawings from this. It's not giving me that option. Um, what I want to show you is this. So we were in a downtrend in terms of the euro dollar heading into the 2016 elections. This candle here is the election night in uh, in 2016. Now, obviously, we had an extended range. We had about a 400 pip range on that night because we saw such a dramatic turnaround in the polls. But I'd warn the guys on, on my desk or the guys I work with that we can anticipate probably a 200 pip uh, movement in terms of the euro, uh, in, in terms of its overall swing on the election night based upon options pricing and volatility. But what you notice, we were in a downtrend. We consolidated. We got this reversal, we took out the lows in terms of prior cycle lows, and then we saw this reversal in the dollar index. Now we're kind of in the opposite scenario here. We've been in a bit of an uptrend here in the Euro. We've pulled back, we've got that.
hi guys can you still uh, can you still hear me Sorry about that. Um, the Wi-Fi actually went down here, and uh, and I got kicked out of the room. Let me uh, let me reshare my screen. Uh, uh, share screen. Okay. Let me know if you can uh, if you can see my charts again and we will continue apologies for that um so where was i i was talking about the euro in 2016 let me just pull this up so i suggest i was, I was just talking through the idea that we're in a downtrend heading into um heading into the uh, the elections in uh 2016 and this year we're in an uptrend we've got a pullback and um, let's just remove all the drawings. And so this was our election, uh, our election night candle uh, was here. We got that anticipated, uh, just 200 pit range. And now we are, uh, we're seeing some strength here. We're actually, or I, I'm long the Euro at the moment. And, um, and what we've got here is a, um, is a flag pattern. Let's clone that. And I'm going to walk you through shortly the, the trading scenario that I potentially see here if we can take out this trend line on a closing basis. But essentially what I'm trying to get across to you is that we're actually in the we're kind of in the inverse scenario to that uh, to the one we were in in 2016 when um, when the price was um, was extending to the downside. Let's see this uh, chart isn't catching up for some reason. There we go. So this was our 2016 move where price uh, checked back and then we resumed the trend, we took out the lows and then reversed. And so that's what I'm actually looking for to, uh, to potentially play out here in terms of the euro that we, uh, we checked back, we checked uh, trend support here at the potential double bottom. If we can take out the, uh, the trend line here, then I think we should test or marginally exceed um, these prior highs before we see a period of uh, a potential correction in terms of in terms of the price action. And we'll look at the trading charts now. Let's just delve into these. So let's go to we we'll start with the dollar index. So we are we've got a pretty neatly defined pattern here now where we have a five wave structure. We can think that wave four is is confirmed now. Certainly as we test this support here, we, we look like we'll take that out. Um, today, as we get the election results through. So as we take that out, what we're looking for on the downside now is an equality objective um, versus this price action here. So we can reasonably expect that to the downside from the high, we can extend into what should be an equality objective, a fifth wave low. Um, now, do we necessarily, does it necessarily in terms of time repeat? No, but certainly what we can anticipate is in terms of scale. And then we look for some uh, Fibonacci measurements here. So versus the fourth wave consolidation, we've got a 161 extension that brings us down um, into this uh, 90 area that, uh, that coincides with the equality objective versus wave one. So 89.70 is the ideal target. But if we think back to 2016 and the Euro dollar here, and this consolidation phase we're in here, we just exceeded it. We didn't really make material new lows. So we could be that, um, that in terms of our current setup, we, you know, we might test this 90.78 area, the 127 extension, which is the minimum downside objective for a wave five. And that could be sufficient then to, to, see, um, to see an uptick in the dollar. But at this stage, the, the target appears to me to be this 90 to 89, 70 area in terms of the dollar index. And so let's go back to the euro here. And we're up testing the, uh, the descending trend line resistance. If we get through this area, then I'm looking for a move up into, uh, into this 120 and, um, and potentially into 121, which is the 127 extension of um, of the wave four consolidation in terms of the euro, and we'll just can mark that up so you can see 
what I'm talking about. So this is our first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, and then we're looking for a fifth at a minimum to hit that 127 extension. But we also have this, um, this descending trend line, oh, sorry, ascending trend line. Let's, uh, let's change this around. Scroll in. So you can see that the, the wave five could extend even at slightly higher to 122.39, which would be um, an ideal tag of the uh, ascending trend line resistance. And then what I anticipate is that we see a more meaningful correction. Because whilst this pattern, whilst we have corrected here, um, it doesn't appear to me at this stage versus the um, the, the advance that we've seen in terms of the euro, that we haven't actually had a meaningful correction in terms of price. So for trends to uh, to really be healthy and to uh, to develop, what we want to see at some point is a minimum of a 38.2% correction. So that would have put us into 1485 on the euro. Uh, we didn't get down there, we, we stopped out, we, we stopped at 116. Um, so this would suggest to me that any move that we see to the upside now um, from, from a breakout from this, this fourth wave correction should be terminal for this leg of the, of, of the trend. And then what we'd anticipate is that we, uh, that we get a, a correction. Let's try and map this out. So at least a three wave correction then that should put us back into um, the wave four base. And so if that's the case, by that stage, um, let's get this fib tool going again. So what we could be looking at there, so if we trade into this um, trend line resistance, and then what we'd see is that this, if, if we get up into this area, and we do find supply and we do get a pullback, then a, a, even just a, a standard three-way pattern would put us back into the wave four base, but that wave four base by that time um, would actually prove to be sufficient for a, for a decent correction because that would meet the 38.2% criteria. Um, and furthermore, we even if we extended slightly, we'd still have this trend channel potentially intact, um, even into a 50% retracement at that point into the 114. 27 um, before then we could look at the next meaningful leg of um, of upside in the euro so from a trend perspective um, we want to see this uh, descending trend line taken out on a closing basis that should set up a retest of the prior highs uh, once we get through there we would anticipate that, that we then extend into to complete the fifth wave here a uh, minimum objective would be the one uh, 121 19 and potentially as high here as 122.30 before we then see some uh, some decent pullback potential in terms of the euro uh, to the downside. So that's what I'm watching with respect to the euro. Like I say, I've got a, a long position running in the euro at the moment, and um, and I'm looking for uh, looking for this pattern to uh, to develop. Uh, so that's the euro. Let's check in with a few of these majors here. So we've got sterling. Uh, Sterling is, uh, is is in a similar pattern. Let's uh, let's remove these drawings, clean it up, and start fresh. So we've got Sterling testing uh, its descending trend line here in what could be a, uh, a triangle pattern, which we'd anticipate to break to the upside. We stalled out. We're actually um, you can't see it on these charts. We're actually sitting right at. Uh, weekly range resistance in terms of sterling and, um, and that's why I think we're seeing some additional weight here but if we can get through the um, the trend line resistance on a closing basis then I think we've got a, a room to run up to this certainly this 133.43 handle um, we've got the additional challenge with sterling in terms of uh, the brexit negotiations ongoing obviously but um the the initial target would be into this uh, 133.40 area what we could actually see though let's uh, let's just bring this out to the weekly chart very quickly and just remind ourselves of the, um, the bigger trend line that we have in play with sterling
So we have a right here. It's coming off one second. This will peak here. So we have this trend channel. So again, what you can see is that um, this 133.43, we have trend line resistance. There was another one that I was tracking. Um, here it is. This is the one I want to, uh, to focus on. So this is from the all time highs here in Sterling and um, can see, let's just remove that one. And the reason why I want to draw your attention to this, um, this bigger trend line is that, uh, let's go back to the daily chart now that we've got that in place, is that even if we extend here um, through the highs or, or, or back into the prior highs, we've actually, or just marginally take them out, um, we've got that major trend line coming in at, uh, at 135. So I want to pay, keep an eye because again, it's, it's a similar um, scenario with respect, to, um, with respect to the Euro that we make marginal new highs, get into a bull trap situation here before we see a more protracted pullback in sterling so that's, uh, that's a level to pay attention to and we've got this one coming in here uh, just above if we do exceed this trend line then we've got the next trend line coming in with the 127 extension this 136 137 area um, but at the moment we're struggling to get this close above um, above the trend line resistance in terms of sterling let's check in with the aussie so the Aussie is retesting the, the pivot at the moment. If the Aussie can get a close above 72.50, then again, I think we're in the same situation with the Aussie that we're in, uh, that we can classify this as a fourth wave. And, um, and we have then targets on the upside. At the minimum target for this, this move to the upside will be the 75.27 level, which is the 127 extension. And we could, if we replicate, um, look at this being our, our wave one. And this is our wave uh, four base here. Then we actually have similar, we have an equality objective. Uh, let's use this. So this is one very shallow and sharp two into a three high protracted wave four. And then this would give us a wave five and a quality objective and the 161 extension of the, um, of the wave four consolidation all coming in at 76.27. So we could trade up into this area before we get a pullback in terms of the Aussie. Uh, so we want to pay attention to any close above 72.50. You can then be looking on intraday charts, maybe an hourly chart or a four hour chart, look for a pullback uh, to get in on the long side to certainly retest uh, range high, uh, the, the current high, cycle high is 74.20, uh, next stop 75.20, the ideal objective being 76.70. Uh, let's take a look at the Kiwi here. Similar story in the Kiwi, we're trying to break out of, um, of the, its, a, uh, its channel, its current channel, which we've been consolidating in. So let's look, if we can get a close above the channel, and retest these prior highs, let's do the same process to give us some targets to trade for on the upside. So this is gonna be our wave four range here. And we have uh, the equality objective. So we have this very shallow one, two. And if we place that versus our four low, we have an equality objective here, which is quite a bit higher. Um, let's draw this in so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. So this, 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 and then this will put us up into um, a 71 handle or let's say late 70s to 71 area um, for the, the cycle to complete. 
Um, and that would, that, would be, that would also coincide with, so this equality leg here from the wave four low would also coincide with uh, a 200% extension of the, uh, the wave four consolidation. So again, if we can get through the 67 or 68 handle on a closing basis, then we have scope to run up to uh, the 71 handle as an upside objective um, for the Kiwi. Let's have a look at gold. Gold again, breaking out of its, um, of its range, uh, of, of, sorry, of its descending uh, triangle resistance here. So if we can uh, get a, a close above uh, Let's just bring this in. The challenge here for gold is the apex of this um, consolidation that we've been in. So if we can get a close above the apex here of, um, of the broader consolidation range, then what we've got a, a chance with gold, let's remove this and this. So what we can see then with gold is uh, if we measure this triangle to the base here, so we could break higher here and be looking at 2,180 would be the, the upside objective. And if we measure from there to there, 127 extension would be 2130, the 161 extension of the current triangle, 2126. I mean, there's plenty of scope in terms of gold on the upside, but we've also got to factor in terms of um, what could drive this gold move is that we have basically every central bank on the planet now either talking about investigating negative rates or potentially moving to them. And so during periods of exceptionally low rates, uh, gold tends to, uh, tends to do well. Um, last but not least, let's check in on a couple of others that I'm looking at. Dollar yen, I think uh, we, we look set now with dollar yen to, let's just draw in the thing we've got going here. So again, we're playing triangles within triangles here. Um, but we have taken out the triangle support. We check back into the triangle, met resistance, on um, during the election night. And so what we want to think about now is do we have a um, channel target here with respect to this? So what we can see now is this is the current channel that we've been trading in. We could actually see um, dollar yen down into this 102 area into this prior supply zone. Um, so keep an eye on this area in terms of uh, potential support for the dollar, dollar yen. Another trade that I've got running at the moment is the Swissy, I'm short the Swissy. I'm looking for the Swissy now to test its um, descending trend channel support. So we could get down to 89.50 or 89.20 ideally. Obviously we could, it's gonna get a bit sticky around 90.30, but uh, the trade's running and it's risk-free at the moment. So I'm looking for the Swissy to get down into this area before we see a bounce. And again, what I want you to, to factor in here or be cognizant of is that although I, um, you know, I'm certainly bearish the, um, the dollar in the long run, uh, I think now with this context, contested election hopefully coming to a resolution, we likely see a little bit more um, weakness in terms of the dollar heading into the back end of the year. But the other thing you need to, uh, to be cognizant of is that come the December um, ECB meeting, we are likely to see um, new monetary policy measures in play from the ECB that will, in the near term or into the back end of this year, likely weigh on the euro. So once we get up into these 121, 122 area in terms of the euro, I'm going to be looking to, to play it um, tactically on the short side and be tactically long the dollar um, into the, probably the beginning of next year before we start to see the next meaningful leg uh, higher in the euro and lower in the dollar. Um, lastly, I would like to take a look at our old friend Bitcoin here. Um, from, uh, from the pattern that we were looking at a few weeks ago, we've continued to break out. We're now potentially going to close above channel resistance here. And if we do so, then um, really what we want to be thinking in terms of Bitcoin, ironically, is there, um, there isn't really much resistance in play until we get up into the 
thousand level and beyond their um, old highs in terms of the, the twenty thousand level. So um, this is one that again I think is benefiting from the um, from global monetary policy essentially. So um, I think there's going to be more opportunity to uh, I think you know we'll certainly see sharp pullbacks. But I'm uh, I'm pretty bullish Bitcoin at the moment and looking for opportunities to add to uh, to long positions. And, um, and I think that pretty much brings me up to speed with respect to trade. So I'm long the euro, short the Swissy, um, and, uh, and I'm going to be watching the Aussie and the Kiwi as well. I think they we can break out here and get some closes above some key levels. There's going to be opportunity on the upside. And um, the S&P 500, I've posted the charts on the Tickmo blog today, but this is what's potentially going to help drive this um, this move in terms of uh, risk sentiments. If the S&P can get a close above um, the descending trend line resistance here, so 3530, let's say, let's say, then I'm looking for these equity markets to test this ideal um, 3730 to 3760 area. I would be pretty bearish up here. Keep an eye on this uh, momentum that continues to develop. We're gonna be looking at triple momentum uh, divergence on this next high. And I think we can see a meaningful pullback and certainly test what I'm currently marking as the uh, the wave four low here, uh, 3200, heading into um, heading into the back end of, the, of this year. Um, so apologies for uh, for the loss of the um, the screen during the uh, the beginning of the session there. Um, couldn't be helped due to uh, to Wi-Fi issues. Um, okay, are there any questions? Anyone want to take me? A look, uh, anyone want to take me to take a look at a chart? Sorry that I haven't covered already in today's session. If you don't have any questions, an N in the chat box will let me know that we're uh, we're all on the same page. Okay, good stuff. Well, look, I'm going to wrap this one up here. And I uh, hope that's been useful and we will reconvene uh, same time next week. Thanks very much.